Hi friends, welcome to Classic Education YouTube channel. Today, uh, let's understand the concept related to the eco-sensitive zones. Okay, in India, we have various protected areas like national parks, wildlife sanctuaries, various bird sanctuaries are there, right? Uh, <coughs> national parks, wildlife sanctuaries, right? Likewise, we have various protected areas. These protected areas are aimed at protecting something. What they are protecting? They are protecting the wildlife. They are protecting the, you know, uh, sensitive, uh, the living creatures there. They are protecting the vegetation also. Flora, fauna, they are protected in these areas. That is why they are called as the protected areas. They are protected through the laws. The parliamentary laws have been passed under the ambit of these laws, these areas are being guarded, right? So, this eco-sensitive zone is related to these protected areas. Some of the zone or some of the area is being demarcated around these protected areas. That demarcated area is called as the eco-sensitive zone. As the term suggests, it is a sensitive zone. It is sensitive to the uh, threat or it is sensitive to the uh, the pollution being caused by the human beings okay let us go further deep into this aspect this eco sensitive zone the term was in news because of some you know uh, the event that is being you know happening in the kerala the kerala the state in the in the in the state of kerala the people are protesting against the notification of the government or they are protesting against the judgment of the supreme court what is this judgment the farmers in kerala they are protesting across several high ranges in the state high ranges means this kerala you know very well that it is the state which consists of the western ghats most of the state is composed of the western ghats that means almost uh, there are various districts most of the districts fall under the high range areas i mean high range hilly areas the people in these hill ranges they are protesting against the supreme court supreme court's recent order to establish one kilometer eco sensitive zone so this is very important the supreme court recently said that in one of its judgment you have to demarcate one kilometer of eco sensitive zone around all the protected areas this is important around all the protected areas wildlife sanctuaries and national parks okay then the unrest is born this is the supreme court judgment but the unrest or the protest is born out of the fear of farmers the farmers are fearing the farmers those who are living uh, in these eco sensitive zone they are you know uh, being threatened i mean they are you know uh, worried because they might lose their livelihood they are fearing that they are thinking that their livelihood will be affected because of the judgment of the this judgment of the supreme court so this you know the protest is being uh, supported by the state government also and some of the opposition parties and the catholic church the uh, christianity is the major religion in the kerala see the church is also involved in the supporting the cause of the farmers see this is what is happening in the kerala and this is what is in the news because of this news the concept of the eco sensitive zone has gained the importance now what exactly supreme court said yes uh, this was the news but what was in the judgment what the supreme court exactly said see in one of the judgments that is the which is proclaimed or the judgment was given on the june 3rd of the 2022 in this judgment or this judgment was given by three judge bench of the supreme court this is a you know constitutional bench it you know gave the verdict uh, while hearing the pil one pil was filed by the people in the Tamil Nadu, okay, the people, the pe Tamil Nadu people or some of the environmentalists, they wanted to uh, declare some uh, some of the areas uh, as the eco-sensitive area in the Nilgiri forest, okay. They wanted to protect some of the forest land in the Nilgiri, so they filed the case in the Supreme Court while hearing that, uh, you know, PIL or public interest litigation, uh, the three bench Je, uh, sorry three member judge uh, bench of the supreme court said that the all the states have to you know demarcate one kilometer around the protected areas as the eco sensitive zone okay 
in 2011 the central government had issued some of the guidelines okay these guidelines were related to the eco sensitive zone the supreme court now in this judgment it upheld the validity of the you know guidelines given by the central government second the supreme court directed all the states to have the mandatory this is very important mandatory one kilometer eco sensitive zone from the demarcated boundaries of the every protected forest land national park and the wildlife sanctuary that means all the protected areas now they should have the one kilometer you know area around them as the eco sensitive zone then no new permanent structure or the mining will be permitted within the eco sensitive zone now the supreme court also said earlier if the mining activity is being you know conducted or if the new uh, structure has been erected okay that that can be there but no new uh, structure no new mining activity will be allowed in the eco sensitive zone next next you know point in the verdict was if the existing eco sensitive zone goes beyond one kilometer buffer zone see in this judgment the supreme court said that there should be one kilometer eco sensitive zone around all the national parks but if the earlier before this judgment if the government had established any of the uh, zone uh, beyond one kilometer as the eco sensitive zone that is also valid okay there should not be any reduction in the area if the area is beyond the one kilometer it is also valid it says that then that extended boundary shall prevail okay it should be valid prevail means it should remain it there should not be an, uh, any alteration even if it is going beyond one kilometer okay see this is what is the supreme court's recent judgment okay if this is the judgment why the people are you know protesting let's look into uh, that because there is a high density of population the people of the kerala who are protesting uh, in these areas the area where the eco sensitive zone has been declared in that area there is a high density of human population that means if the eco sensitive zone is declared as the ec esz in short it is called as the esz eco, eco sensitive zone their you know uh, population i mean they, their economical activities will be affected if they are doing mining if they are you know felling the trees if they are gain, gaining some of the minor forest income from the minor forest produce all those things will be affected okay then farmer groups and the political parties have been demanding that all the settlements be exempt from the esz ruling that means eco sensitive zone supreme court since there is a high density of the population and there is a settlement also settlements means these living areas the, so many settlements are there these people are asking that if there is a high density of the people or if there is a you know heavy settlement of the people those areas should be excluded from the eco sensitive zone this is what the, these people are you know asking then kerala state government also proposed some years back it had also proposed that some national parks such as the thattai card Na bird sanctuary the extent of the esz area should be reduced the st st kerala state government this is the guideline issued by the central government and that th those guidelines are upheld by the supreme court right but against these guidelines so kerala it had asked the central government to reduce the eco sensitive zone area especially around some of the uh, places like Th thattai card bird life sanctuary okay thattai card bird life sanctuary see the uh, kerala government said that instead of having one kilometer eco sensitive zone let us have lesser than one kilometer instead of you know making mandatory rule of one kilometer eco sensitive zone the kerala government is asking that you know make it a zone from zero to one kilometer okay any area that means it is asking the area to be less than one kilometer right that means from zero to one this is not being you know uh, accepted by the central government but again there is a you know <coughs> uh, problem with the villagers also they are you know feeling that they this eco sensitive zone judgment will restrict their agricultural and related activities see in uh, eco sensitive zone some of the activities are prohibited some of the activities are regulated okay very few of the activities which are environmental friendly are you know uh, allowed in these eco sensitive zones but these farmers are feeling that if they, you know they are for you know practicing some of the inorganic ways of farming see if, since they are you know uh, using the inorganic chemicals and all their agricultural activities may be affected see these are the concerns of the people and because of this they are protesting against the judgment of the supreme court 
Now, what exactly is the eco-sensitive zone? Let's go further deeper into it and what were the guidelines issued by the central government. Uh, uh, there is a <coughs> action plan called the National Wildlife Action Plan. Right? There were uh, three, uh, as of today, there are three uh, national action plans right, related to the wildlife. This is the second national wildlife action plan which was issued by the central government in the year 2002. See, this was in effect from for 15 years till the 2016. But there are again third guidelines are there. They are called as the National Wildlife Action Plan 3. Their action plan is from 2017 to 2031. 2017 to 31. That means 15 years. For for every 15 year, there will be specific guidelines. Those guidelines will will be related to the protection of the wildlife. Okay. But in the second guidelines, the central government, especially the Ministry of Environment, Forests and the Climate Change. Okay. This is the central ministry which regulates or which looks after the all the all the natural habitat or the uh, natural environment of the country, including the wildlife. This guideline of the MOEF and CC said that within 10 kilometer of the boundary of the national parks and the wildlife sanctuary is to be notified as the eco fragile zone. Okay. This eco sensitive zone is also called as the zone fragile is nothing but the very sensitive zone if there is a very small disturbance to this zone okay there will be you no know, huge destruction or uh, okay huge destruction to the habitat of the animals okay for for that whole you know uh, uh, ecosystem itself right see this guideline in 2002 said that uh, the, especially by the MOE of NCC that is Ministry of Forests and the uh, Ecos Ministry of Forests and Cl climate change it said within 10 kilometer it you know demarcated the 10 kilometer around the all the protected areas as the eco sensitive zone or the eco fragile zone <coughs> while the 10 kilometer rule is implemented as a general principle this is the general principle 10 kilometer but there is the extent of this application can vary it said up to 10 kilometer the demarcation can be there but it is not the uh, mandatory 10 kilometer around the uh, 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 national parks are the wildlife sanctuaries up to 10 kilometer it might be 1 kilometer or 2 kilometer 8 kilometer or 9 kilometer but up to 10 kilometer it can be declared as the eco sensitive zone areas beyond 10 kilometer can also be notified by the union government okay there is one more provision it said maximum up to 10 kilometer ESZ can be there but in some of the cases this 10 kilometer can also be extended beyond the 10 kilometer limit if the area is okay uh, sensitive if the area has the sensitive corridors okay say for example this is the national park okay so around this this 10 kilometer has been declared as the eco sensitive zone but beyond this also sometimes there will be some very sensitive zones in these zones there will be huge you know heavy wildlife movement elephant corridors might be there okay there might be a very uh, endemic species dwelling there okay to protect that kind of you know a special area this 10 kilometer rule can be extended okay this is the provision then <coughs> eco sensitive zone may not be uniform all around and it could be variable with the width and the extent yes it can vary from 1 kilometer to 10 kilometer and even beyond 10 kilometer in some of the cases okay ESZs are notified by the MOEF and CC government of India under the environmental protection act of 1986 this is very important these guidelines are the national wildlife action plan these plans and the guidelines they are issued under the one special act called as the environmental protection act of 1986 but this act itself will not you know include the terms like the eco sensitive zone there is no uh, direct you know, reference of the eco sensitive zone but these zones are declared under this act okay this is very important you know fact then why these eco sensitive zones are created what was the purpose what what you know purposes these zones will you know fulfill let us look into that according to the guidelines issued by the environment ministry in 2011 ESZs are created because of the following reasons okay these are the purposes because of which these ESZs are created what were those uh, <coughs> purposes 
being the shock absorbers these echo sensitive zones will act as the shock absorbers in what way they will become the shock absorbers okay this is the wildlife sanctuary let us consider this is wildlife sanctuary around this there is a echo sensitive zone okay if this zone is declared as the echo sensitive zone there will be restricted human movement there will be restricted human uh, activities right restricted industrial activity or restricted construction and all okay if there is a, a restriction a restriction for the human activities there this wildlife sanctuary or protected area can be Sec more sec it can be more secure right there will be very minimal th threat to this otherwise if this area is not declared as the echo sensitive zone there will be you know uh, frequent human disturbance to this protected area okay to protect this area more and more es jets are created these es jets will act as the shock absorbers these shocks are given by the human activities right then to minimize the negative impact on the fragile ecosystems yes these you know <coughs> protected areas are fragile in nature what do you mean by fragile there will be some species called keystone species if the human activities if the human beings go and more and more and if they hunt the particular animal let us say tiger if they hunt more and more tiger uh, in the particular ecosystem tiger population will come down what happens if the <coughs> Uh, tiger population comes down other herbivorous animals population will be increased like deer will be there and other you know herbivorous animals will be there their population will increase what happens if their population increase they will depend more and more on the vegetation and they will feed more on the plants then the plant population will, will come down and whole ecosystem will be collapsed in that way it is it is the fragile ecosystem right we have to prevent that kind of human activities which will lead to the uh, destruction of the forests okay Okay. these are you know the forest may seem you now very vast in their area they might seem that very diverse in their species but they are very sensitive okay if there is a little disturbance all of the chain will be affected and uh, they will become you know uh, 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 extinct within very short period of time right the, in that way they are the fragile ecosystems okay <coughs> these ecosystem uh, sorry uh, es jets are created to act as transition zone from areas requiring the higher protection to the areas requiring the lesser protection right this is the area that means the national uh, park which this requires the highest protection right but this is the area outside the esz this area will require least protection from the laws all right between these least protection requiring area and the area which requires the highest protection we have created this eco sensitive zone this zone will create oh sorry act as the transition zone okay this is the transition zone between the areas which require highest protection and the lowest protection then these are not these es jets are not meant to hamper the daily activities of the people yes the people might be living in these areas okay in the people living in the esz uh, or in this zone their daily activity will not be affected right day to day activity can be carried out they can you know fulfill their stomach without any much you know difficulty but the actual you know purpose of these esz is <coughs> to guard the protected areas and refine the environment around them this is very important these esz <coughs> are created to guard the protected areas this is the protected area this esz will guard this central core area right uh, along with the guarding this area <coughs> it will refine the environment around them right see if this zone is not created what happens the people will go there and they will establish more and more uh, industries they will involve in the mining activities they will establish the tourist places uh, eco tourism is gaining more and more importance nowadays you know people are visiting the natural places in these areas hotels will come up more and more you know pollution will be there people will start using more plastic uh, materials in that way it will you know destroy the whole ecosystem or the environment in this zone but by establishing the esz we are you know refining the environment around the protected areas these are the main you know purposes because of which the es jets were created then what kind of activities are al are allowed in the es jet right some of the activities are prohibited some of the activities are regulated and some of the activities are permitted the human beings they should not involve in the commercial mining 
right the mining should not take place in this you know uh, esz there should not be any sawmills sawmills means the wood cutting industries okay industries causing the pollution establishment of major hydroelectric power projects uh, commercial use of the wood tourism activities like right then discharge of effluents solid waste and hazardous substances all these the activities they directly affect the environment they directly you know emit the pollutants into the en into the environment some of the activities like mining they will directly affect the size of the forest they will lead to the deforestation these are highly threatening activities these activities are completely prohibited in the eco sensitive zones next kind of activities they are regulated that means they these activities come under the law they have to take the permission from the authorities okay if their you know activity in, goes beyond the threshold limit they have to be regulated that means they have to reduce these activities what are those kind of activities felling of the trees right this is uh, for felling some of the trees you have to take the permission if the permission is granted you have you can go for you know felling the trees then establishment of the hotels or the resorts commercial use of natural water erection of electrical cables drastic change of agriculture system see this is important change in agricultural system the farmers in the kerala they are you know protesting and they are fearing that their agricultural activity will be affected why they should not change the agricultural system initially if they are practicing organic farming or if they are not using any chemical substances to protect their crops they have to follow that eco friendly uh, pathway to produce the crops but if they want to change that system of agriculture into inorganic farm it is not allowed you see if the farmers start to use more and more uh, pesticides it will affect the uh local you know flora and fauna right the insects will m die more and more this will lead to the uh, uh, reduced pollination there will be reduced you know crop yield also in the in the if they if they instead of using the chemicals if they use the gm crops these gm crops will affect the uh, species diversity itself right so they are you know uh, in one way they are again uh, threatening to the ecosystem these are you know prohibited or some of the agricultural activities are regulated but that means they have to take the permission be before changing the type of agriculture adoption of heavy technology pesticide use okay widening of the roads these are all regulated that means the uh, with the permission by the authorities they can be carried out then permitted there is no restriction on these activities they can be conducted without the, the permission of any authorities right what kind of activities are permitted ongoing agricultural or horticultural practices rain water harvesting then organic farming use of renewable energy sources adoption of green technology right all of these activities are completely eco friendly in no way they will harm the environment okay they, these are given the you know a complete freedom they can carry out all these activities these are the prohibited regulated and permitted activities within the eco sensitive zones then what is the significance of this eco sensitive zone what is yes we have seen the purpose if you know analyze the purpose of creating the esgs you can easily understand the significance of these eco sensitive zones what is the significance they will minimize the impact of urbanization and other developmental activities right see especially in the bengaluru these eco sensitive zones were in the news some years back there the government was trying to reduce the eco sensitive zone let us say initially uh, there was 5 kilometers of eco sensitive zone i am not exactly telling i am just taking the hypothetical you know figure here it is related to the banner ghatta national park in the bengaluru in this uh, area they had earlier they had created the eco sensitive zone but again the government was thinking to reduce this eco sensitive zone in its size what is happening here this reduction in the esz was happening because of the urbanization pressure the Bangalore is the fast spreading urban area they have to find more and more space to create the dwelling places right that you know uh, thought led to the the in that way the government thought to reduce the eco sensitive zone they, so that they can accommodate more and more you know dwelling places here so but this was again opposed by the environmentalists okay so in that way this will minimize the impact of urbanization okay the impact on this core area can be reduced okay then esgs will help in in situ conservation what is in situ conservation 
in situ conservation means conserving or the protecting the wildlife or the the vegetation in their own locality right there are two concepts in situ conservation and ex situ conservation in in situ method of conservation all the wildlife all the vegetation they are protected in their own locality where they are there only will protect these you know uh, wildlife and the plants through the laws okay that is in situ conservation ex situ conservation means if there is a species if there is a, uh, some species which is a threatened we will bring that you know threatened species into the zoos or the botanical parks and we will rear them in that uh, uh, zoo or the national park here we are you know taking the organism out of its native place and we are rearing it somewhere else that kind of you know uh, conservation is called as the ex situ conservation but these eco sensitive zones without changing the habitat of a, an organism it will facilitate the conservation that is called as the in situ conservation of the wildlife or the uh, vegetation then it, this will minimize the forest depletion and man and animal conflict right again why the man and animal conflict takes place very simple right this takes place because we are reducing the habitat of the animals if the animals habitat is reduced they have to find more space to live somewhere right because of that they, these animals are coming out of their you know uh, habitat and now they are you know interfering with the human life that is called as the you know man and animal conflict but if we create the eco sensitive zone the animals will fly find more habitat or more habitation in the uh, eco sensitive zone area okay in that way it will reduce the man and animal conflict and it will reduce the forest depletion okay if we are creating the buffer zone around the a national park or the wildlife sanctuary instead of you know directly affecting or directly felling the trees in the core area of the national park we are created the one buffer zone in that zone some regulated activities are permitted so in that way it will reduce the forest depletion because to, for felling the trees we have to take the permission from the authorities right before felling if the authority is not uh, authorities will not give the permission we were, we are not involving in that you know felling of the trees in that way this will minimize the forest depletion okay these are the uh, important significance of the eco sensitive zones then what are the challenges or threats to eco sensitive zone yes it is a very beautiful concept this you know uh, these zones are established according to the guidelines or according to the environmental protection act of 1986 they have to be obeyed even the supreme court has given the permission to esgs the it has also validated these esgs but what are the threats to these esgs right we because human population is increasing there is a rapid urbanization there is a need for more and more economic development these will you know impact the esgs they will become the threats to the you know esgs what are those threats one developmental activities yes because of the increasing human population because of the increasing needs of the uh, population we have to develop more these developmental activities like the construction of the road or you know uh, establishing the railway line or electric lines these are you know developmental activities even mining also comes under the developmental activity these are the threats to the eco sensitive zones then tourism tourism has become the you know major buzzword in recent uh, you know times especially in recent 6 uh, to 7 years because of the increased economical development because of the increased income of the people because of their you know changed preferences tourism is becoming major economical activity and major you know uh, pleasure activity for the people now especially within the tourism eco tourism is gaining more and more importance if the people go to the eco tourism that means the tour related to the ecosystem are going to the natural places people will go there they will you know use more and more plastics they will, uh, they will you know uh, pollute the local environment so in that way tourism is also a threat then introduction of exotic species or uh, example eucalyptus and acacia these are the very problematic species of the plant if the farmers are allowed to cultivate the commercial horticulture they may cultivate the trees like eucalyptus and acacia because in the market they will fetch more and more value if the farmers you know cultivate more and more uh, these kind of you know uh, 
plants they will become the they are exotic species because they have bought from the different countries this eucalyptus comes from the australia these will become the invasive species in the forest ecosystem the local plant population will be suppressed because of the you know uh, these plants these plants are highly you know uh, invasive in you know nature they will spread very fast and they will affect the uh, they have the smothering effect it is called as the smothering effect they have the smothering effect on the another plant these plants are the native plants will be suppressed okay in that way they will destroy the uh, diversity of the plants only eucalyptus will be established okay it is a threat to the uh, ecosystem then climate change it is very common everywhere the climate is changing because of the anthropogenic activities because of the global warming and because of the you know burning of more and more hydrocarbons this climate change is happening so because of this climate change we are you know witnessing extreme events like heavy flooding or heavy uh, long period of drought in different parts of the country earlier some of the parts of the country they were not experiencing the drought but they have now started to experience more and more drought and the, some of the areas where there was no flooding there the you no know, floods are becoming the uh, normal in you know rainy season so these are the extreme events associated with the climate change these will have the impact on the eco sensitive zone for example recently the assam floods have affected the kaziranga national park and the, its wildlife especially uh, one horn rhino these rhinos where they were struggling to find the place when there was a heavy flood okay these kinds of you know extreme climate you know events will become the threat to the eco sensitive zone then local communities the people the especially the tribal people they will involve especially in the uh, northeast uh, Uh, part of the country there is a still prevail uh, primitive form of agriculture is being practiced it is called as the slash and burn agriculture or zooming cultivation this zoom cultivation will become the threat to the eco sensitive zone because here in this way of farming people will fell the trees they will uh, make the forest area into the agricultural area they will cultivate the crops once the land loses its fertility they will again shift their cultivation area into different place so this is called as the shifting cultivation or slash and burn agriculture these you know this activity of the human beings is also a threat to the eco sensitive zones okay so these are the issues related to eco sensitive zones or the threats to the eco sensitive zone now we will come to one important factual information related to the kerala so this uh, event or the whatever the uh, farmers were you know protesting in that locality there is one wildlife sanctuary called thatte kaad wildlife sanctuary let's learn about that okay this thatte kaad wildlife sanctuary it is the first bird sanctuary in kerala this is a wildlife sanctuary it is also called as the bird sanctuary okay this is the first bird sanctuary which is established in the kerala it is also called by salim ali bird sanctuary it is also called as the salim ali bird sanctuary okay it is situated at the foot of the western ghats yes kerala is a part of western ghats then sanctuary it expands over a staggering 25 square km it's very small in area right around only 25 square km this is located north side of the periyar river okay then it is home to a large number of resident and migratory birds it gives the habitation for the migratory birds the birds are coming from different areas especially especially from the himalayas in the winter season they will come to the south and they will you know breed in the winter season in south and they will produce their offspring once the environment become congenial in their native place they will go back okay these this you know a thatte kaad sanctuary will provide the habitat for these migratory birds this is a lowland area located between periyar river and the number of its branches the periyar river before going into the arabian sea it will you know branch right between these branches of the uh, periyar river th this sanctuary is located but this is major river flows in the south of this that means periyar river is located to the north of sorry north side so this is the periyar river flowing in this direction right from west to east it is of east flowing river so this sanctuary is located in this area north of this river okay <coughs> then many watering birds from the uh, wintering birds from the himalayas you know uh, they will you know come here 
they this wildlife sanctuary contains different types of forest though it is you know located in the equatorial rainforest area it provides you no know, uh, it has the habitation for different kinds of forest like tropical evergreen forest is there tropical semi evergreen forest is there then deciduous forest all these are the tropical forests only but varying in their nature like evergreen semi evergreen and deciduous different you know species of you know plants are you no know, found here then along with this small patches of grasslands are also found see from grasslands to deciduous to semi evergreen to evergreen all varieties of you know plants can be found in this you know wildlife sanctuary in that way it is very unique wildlife sanctuary you can say that then what is the speciality of this wildlife sanctuary being the first bird sanctuary in the kerala it is also uh, known for one peculiar species called as the ceylon frog mouth it is the bird okay this is the endemic species in the uh, this wildlife sanctuary okay this is the major habitat for this rare bird species okay you have to remember this is very important fact okay important fact then other rare birds which are found here are uh, along with the ceylon frog mouth don't confuse though the name is a ceylon frog mouth it is a it's not a frog it is a bird okay then <coughs> bordelon's long eared indian night jar peninsular bay owl crimson throated barbet malabar grey hornbill malabar trogon right these are all the bird species they can be found in this wildlife sanctuary okay these are rare bird species please remember them okay so this sanctuary provides the habitat for these birds okay this is all about the ongoing issue in the kerala this is all about the eco sensitive zones who creates them okay what are what is the extent of the eco sensitive zone what is the significance of these zones and what are the threats faced by these zones and this is the thatte card wildlife sanctuary which is related to the western guards okay this is what all i wanted to convey in this video thank you for watching this video